Hi, and welcome to this morning yoga flow. Let's begin in child's pose, connecting to the breath. So come into a variation of child's pose that feels comfortable for you, whether it's arms back or arms forward, doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna go arms back to encourage the opening in the upper back and the neck. So as you settle into your child's pose here, feel that your body can drop down into the ground. On the exhalation, especially feel the front of the rib cage release away from the thighs. And on your inhalation, let the back body expand. Slow, steady breathing here, in and out through the nose. Come up onto your hands and your knees. Come into the cat position and start to round and open up. Now keep the opening there in the upper back, in the back of the neck, and then start to spread across your collarbones. Reach the sit bones back, keeping some of the opening there in your back. So you're starting to elongate the spine, but you're keeping the cat feeling in your back as if the back is still open. Reach down into your hands to balance the shoulders right over the hands. Then one leg at a time, step back into plank position. See if you can still keep that cat feeling in your back while elongating the spine, reach the sit bones, broaden across your collarbones so the chest and upper back are broad. Reach down in between your big toe mounds and second toe mounds and engage your leg muscles. Then tap your knees down, slide back the hips towards the heels as you reach back into extended child's. Then come back, shoulders over the wrists, and then hips forward towards the wrist. Engage your glutes, open up your heart, slide back, reach the hips back towards the heels. Keep some of the cat opening in your back, as well as the broadening of the collarbones. Glide forward here, start to bring the hips, pelvis forward towards the wrist, squeeze the glutes in and down as you lift up to the front of the spine and stretch back again. One more time, glide the hips forward, slide the pelvis to the wrist, engage in the back, open the front, shoulder blades in and down, and stretch back. Lift up into downward facing dog from here. Bend your left knee and reach your right heel bone down to the ground. Change, bend the right knee and reach the left heel bone down. One more time, bend left knee, reach the right heel bone down. Change, bend the right knee, reach the left heel down. Bend both knees, lift the hips up high, and then reach the heel bones down to the ground. One hand print at a time, walk your hands back to your feet now. Press into the hands. Relax at the back of your mat as you fold. And then take your feet shoulder distance apart with the toes turned out just slightly. Comfortable position to come into your deepest expression of the squat. Lower your hips down towards your heels. Then bring your hands behind your head. Let your head drop down. 
Then lift your hips up into the air. Head still down. Now roll yourself up. And then as you roll up, now start to squeeze in the glutes and the upper back, just like we did in the modified up dog. Roll your chest open, contract your back muscles. And then roll the elbows in, chin to chest, roll yourself back down. Come into the squat, drop the buttocks. Lift your heart in the squat. Elbows back, elbows in, lower your head down. Round and lift your hips. Roll yourself up. Squeeze the glutes in and down, engage your back muscles open. Roll the elbows in and roll yourself down. Lower the hips into your squat. Lift your heart, lift your elbows now, then reach the arms up into the air. Now bring your right hand to your left ankle. Reach the left arm up. And as you exhale, tuck in, bring your left elbow in and down. Twist open, turn your navel, reach your arm. And twist down. Last one, twist and reach. Back to center, change sides, left hand to right ankle. Turn your belly, reach your arm up. Back to center, twist and reach. Back to center. Last one, twist and reach. Back to center. And sit your buttock to the floor for ab torture, Austin. We're gonna do some ab stuff. We're gonna work on a variation of boat pose. In this variation, instead of balancing up on your sacrum, like we would for the classic pose, we're gonna do a more hollow body hold where we plant the lower back down onto the ground and then try to draw the rib cage in and down. Now, if you feel at any point, like your rib cage tries to leave your pelvis or your lower back arches, you need to make the exercise less difficult. Tuck your knees in, reach your right leg forward, See if you can lower it further, keeping the lower back down as you reach your left arm back and hold. 15 seconds here. The further you reach your arm and your leg, the more challenging it's gonna be on your core. Keep the lower back down, draw your ribs down, use your right hand to pull in and down. As you check, you can feel, oh, sometimes what I think is happening with the ribs isn't really happening. Change sides now, 15 seconds on the other side. Chin in, neck long. Now hug your knees in, roll yourself up. Come onto the hands and the knees. Right arm forward, left leg back. Now as you reach the arm and the leg, Lift up your ribs. Keep the same feeling that you had on your back a moment ago. Even if you can't lift as high as you'd like. Take the arm and the leg out to the side. Then bend the left knee. Reach your right hand back towards your foot. Release. Change sides. Left arm forward. Right leg back. We'll revisit that and see if we can bind after we do a couple stretches. Press the ground away. Feel the cat feeling through your lower back, back of the neck as you lengthen the spine. Reach the leg and the arm further away from the ground. Don't arch. Open to the side. Watch out for the credenza. Then bend the knee heel towards the buttock as you float the arm back towards the foot. Release, down dog. Okay, now adding on from your downward facing dog, reach your shoulder blades into your hands, push. And then see if we can do a couple of rabbit hops. 
So from the down dog, the shorter down dog, you'll lean and then see if you can hop and tuck your knees to your chest, like so. Almost like you're gonna go into a handstand. You can go against the wall if you're afraid you're gonna tip over. Two more. Then hop to seated, back onto your back. Last round. Curl up, right leg, left arm. Try to come up off of your shoulder blades. Change. Then lower your legs down, stretch your arms, deep full body stretch. Reach up and imagine you're grabbing a bar and it's pulling you up, and all the way up, reach up, good, and stretch past your feet. Roll yourself back up. Now come into a tall kneeling position with your toes pointed straight back. As you roll your groins back so your thighs are neutral, firm your buttock in and down. Arms forward, lean back as far as you can towards your heels. And then press through your strong legs and come back up. Slowly lean back. Back up. Two more. Last one. Hold in the back position and then come back up. Sit onto your heels, raise your arms up. Reach your arms back behind you. Walk the hands back, open up your heart but connect your rib cage down to your hips. And as you squeeze your glutes, see if you can lift the hips up and stretch through the quads and through the hips. Lower your butt down. Sit back up, arms up, stand up on the knees, arms forward, lean back, squeeze your glutes. See if you can go an inch or two further. Come back up and sit back or lean back. Back up, last one. Back up, stand up on your knees. Sit back onto your heels, reach your arms back, plant the hands, lift your heart, lift your hips, draw rib cage down the pelvis, glutes to the backs of the knees, and then stretch through the front of your hips. Release that. <clears throat> now stand up on your knees, Clasp your hands behind your back. And as you work your legs like we practiced, roll your chest open. And you can hold here for five breaths, working on opening up the shoulders. Or if you're flexible enough, back bend and put your hands on your heels. You can also curl the toes under, make it a little easier to touch the heels. Mm 
and come back up. Lie on your belly. Bend the knees and reach back with your hands for your feet. Now, if it's um, too gnarly to reach for the feet, you can just clasp the hands like we just practiced. Now, variation one, you're going to draw your heels towards your buttock. Squeeze your buttock down so your belly lifts. And then just lengthen along the floor, reaching the buttocks out of the lower back, reaching the back skull away from the buttocks. Now, if it doesn't feel like you're getting much sensation in your hip flexors or your quads to do that, then you can start to go further. You can lift the legs and reach the feet back to come into extension. But if you already feel like, oh dang, there's enough stretch just to catch my feet, just work on that. You don't need to try to go past the level you're at. And it's not even so much of a level. Don't think of it as a level. What we're doing is deepening our awareness in our yoga practice. So it's not so important the shape that we take but just that we keep coming to the mat, sensing the body, moving the body daily. There's this common notion that we have to get really good at acrobatics and um, contortionism. That's not really the aim of the yoga practice. Lower yourself down and rest one cheek. Rest your other cheek. Come up onto hands and knees. Stretch your left leg, or left arm forward and your right leg back. Change. Reach your right arm, left leg. Then bend your left knee and see if you can reach back with the right arm and catch your foot. Now, just like we practice, reach the buttock down so that it's not all in your lower back. See if you can back bend through the back of your heart spine so that the heart is open. Draw the energy from your pelvic floor up your spine. Release, change sides. But first, round your back. Inhale into extension. Then reach left arm, right leg. Bend the knee, reach the arm back. Move the buttock flesh down and then see if you can get the heart spine to move. Draw energy up from the pelvic floor as you reach the leg up and back. Release that. Round your back. Inhale into extension. Exhale to round. Inhale to neutral. Set your elbows down. Come into down dog on your forearms. If you're a handstander, headstander, or forearm balancer, practice that right now instead. To make your forearm down dog more challenging, try holding one leg up. Stay with your breath. If you're in the forearm down dog, I want you to try a different variation now. Set your knees down, turn your palms up, and with your elbows right underneath your shoulders and your hands shoulder distance apart, plug your ribs up, and then see if you can lift the knees up without the arms twisting in. And see if you can lift all the way up. 
trying to let the arms twist in, hands towards each other. All right, finish up your inversion and come into extended child's pose. Now, a really important part of our gait cycle is for the ability of the big toe to move. And in the, um, uh, what did I call it? Knee exercises video, I talked about how important that big toe movement is, and we did some exercises. A mobility exercise that you could work on is, well, a flexibility exercise you could work on to gain the range of motion is to practice toes curled under sitting back. A more humane version is to do warrior one with the big toe up the wall, or you can just kind of pin your big toe against the ledge and stretch, isolate just the big toe. Like I would take it against the edge of that thing. Do just my big toe for warrior one. But this is another way that you can do it once you feel that you've gained some access to the humane warrior one or big toe against the wall version. And that's in the, um, what do you call that thing? The fundamentals course. So from big toe torture asana, slide your left hand behind your back from above. Use your right hand to encourage the stretch just a little further. and release that. Now let me show you an intermediate stage to this one. You can stick a block between your buttock and your heel and actually makes it easier. Oh, so much better. Take your right arm up. I haven't practiced this one in a, about a week and it's showing. Release that and point your toes back. Walk your hands back one more, one more time. Roll your chest open as you stretch your buttocks to the backs of your knees. And then this one, ideally have your hands reversed and look over your left shoulder. At the same time, deep exhalation into the right chest wall. So you can feel it relax and all that neck stuff start to stretch there as the right collarbone drops, the ribs below the collarbone drop. Oh, bring your head back up on top and over to the other side. Wow, that's a lot of sensation. Really about the breath here. So take a breath in and then deep exhalation into those ribs below the collarbone. Let the left chest wall deflate. Maui wowie. Come back up from there. Could you feel that? It's kind of nice. Um, let's do a little happy baby sequence now. Lie on your back and take a hold of the outside edges of your feet. Take 
Take Baddha Konasana legs, soles of the feet together. Then knees together, wrap your arms around your knees, hold your elbows. One more round, happy baby. Parakon, Parakonasin. Hug the knees. Now take your right big toe, set your left leg down and stretch the right leg towards straight as you open it to the side a bit. Really need my strap for this one, but uh, and go with what I can get today with the big toe. And then stretch your left leg out along the ground. So you could bend the knee, the right knee, keep a little bend in the knee as you stretch. Open it out to the side. If um, the leg doesn't go all the way straight for me, as it is for me. Or you can use a strap. Come back to center, change legs, take the left big toe, stretch the right leg out, There we go, I just need a few breaths. Come back. And now for your final spinal twist. You can go knee over knee, you can hug one knee in, whichever you prefer. Come back to center, change sides.
Come back to center. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you for joining me for class today. If you'd like to finish with a five minute guided Shavasana, then you can click this link over here. If you'd like to finish with a five minute silent Shavasana, you can click this link here. Shavasana is the most important part of your practice. So I recommend that you finish with that. I'll see you next time.